All right, I am gonna just jump into this live because I wanna upload it to my um, YouTube channel and I don't wanna have that much of a delay in the beginning. So thank you all for joining. Today, I want to talk to what people call in the physical reality, maybe the 144,000, the light workers, the chosen, the, the God, so to speak which all is God having a human experience, just vibrating at a different frequency. But I want to uh, dedicate this particular video to those who feel, you know, a little separated maybe from source, a little misunderstood, maybe not belonging. And I want to explain something to you because I myself went through this in my journey in the physical reality. Um, and I do consultations also, so I have a lot of people. And actually today, somebody um, consulted with me feeling like that. And they get so depressed and feeling like they don't belong. So they want to be on the other side. You know, they want to be in the darkness, so to speak. And um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I want to break this down to you all to get a better understanding that really we're here in the physical reality to be creating heaven here on earth. And I want to break that down how, from my experiences and the things that I've been through. Hey, brown skin, thank you for being here, babe. From I, that I've been through, and I don't know how to draw. So I'm gonna use my um, backdrop right here to give you a visual because when you are conscious, you can see God in anything. You could understand the totality from a picture from anything outside of you because as within, so without, you know, on earth as it is in heaven. So this is just a duplicate of yourself. Everything is you, God, pushed out. So here, this picture that I fell in love with, I was just looking at it, and instead of drawing, I could just point to this, and we can see the totality of God from here for those that are depressed. And so, so this darkness that's on this picture, we're going to look at that as if it's the darkness that was on the face of the deep in the foundation of the world in the beginning of the recreation, right? There was darkness in the biblical text, it says, on the face of the deep. So that darkness is really just energy that we all stem from. So we, was, we were already present because all things are energy, frequency, and vibration. We were already present in the foundation of the beginning of the so-called recreation of the world in darkness, just vibrating, right? And so at the top... Yeah, you can see that at the top, that little crescent up there, we're going to say that that is the divine uh, frequency. We're going to say that that is the divine God. You know, these little dots right here, we're going to call that spirit. We all have this spirit, right? So we all, this is God in his totality, the divine, the source, the creator, creation, not the man upstairs that people think is in, in physical form, the energetic part of God. We're going to call that little crescent looking moon up there, the totality of God, right? So spirit is here, the little dots. And so we come forth in human form right here, having physical eyes right here in our body per se, experiencing life as a human. So we are God, we are an extension of source God having a human experience. And along with our physical body, the avatar that we chose to come forth in to experience this thing called life, we have this thing that we call the ego, right? And so the ego, we're going to say the ego is these little flares right here because the ego is on fire. Like, right, we get boastful in the ego per se. Maybe we're a doctor, maybe we're a lawyer, a judge, or we're president of something. We're a supervisor or something. And so in the physical reality, the ego... <laughs> begins to control us if we we are really low and, and allow it to, right? And so we look at everything in the physical reality through these eyes when we're in physical form, just having a human experience. But then there's a time in our journey, and this is where I believe those so-called light workers, those, you know, high frequency beings, they're already tapped into this part of their journey. See, this part of the journey is when you're conscious, of being maybe an avatar, a being, a physical being. This part of the journey, you're using the subconscious mind though. And so on this part of the journey, being that you're using the subconscious mind, you're tapped into source energy, which is like the super conscious. And this is about when they, when they talk about this here in the biblical text, they're talking about the marriage, you know, the bride and 
um, the wedding. They often talk about the wedding. So this is where the real union begins. When your subconscious mind, which is the seat of your soul, is tapped into the superconscious mind, the all-knowing source, the divine frequency. <laughs> and so now you're not looking no more with your physical eyes. You have eyes now that you, you're using your third eye here. But in this form, you have eyes, but you cannot see yet. You have ears, but you're not hearing. But in this particular part of your journey where the so-called chosen ones that be so depressed sometimes, they vibrate here. <laughs> and when they vibrate at this particular frequency, maybe they feel alone here because this could be a lonely place if you, if you really haven't went in and, and, and grasped the totality of who you are just yet. Because you don't feel like any of the physical beings no more when you're here. You feel misunderstood. And I even did a TikTok about this one the other day with my um, my uncle who lived, he was really, really conscious of genius, but he lived off of uh, Mad Dog 2020 and beer. And so he, he, he felt misunderstood, you know, and sometimes people here in this part of their journey, their frequency be so high but yet they have to down themselves maybe sometimes with meat, sometimes with beer. They have to down, you know, so it could work as a depressant, so to speak, because their frequency is really, really high. They tapped into source, a divine frequency, but yet the people in the physical reality are misunderstanding them. They're calling them crazy. So right here, the seed of your soul now is open up to source. But some of these people are wanting not to be in the physical reality and, and they often stay away from others. They'll stay inside of their house. They'll want to be in the darkness, so to speak, because the darkness is where they stem from. It's almost like intuitively they know that they want to go back home and to experience this darkness because this is where they stem from and that's all they could resonate with. And so they don't want to go outside because they want the darkness. They don't want the sun to shine. Maybe they close their blinds all the time. Maybe they're a little hermit, you know. Maybe they um, are a really high-level introverted being. <laughs> Maybe they feel like they don't belong at any type of social event. And all they want to do is be alone by themselves. Maybe it could get so low to they're depressed and want to die and go back to this darkness because they're not understanding the totality of who they really, really are. They just have this high frequency and they're having this human experience, not remembering that they was once in the darkness and wanted to come on this side <laughs> and wanted to have a human experience. So Oftentimes we want to have, we don't remember from the darkness, we want to have the human experience, come and have the human experience and forget about our superpowers and then we no longer want to be here. So we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, in and out, in and out, because we're supposed to be evolving to our higher self and tapping into divine source. <laughs> That's what we're supposed to do. But in the human form, we forget about that there. We forget about how to use our superpowers. And, and allow life to sit there and let our little light get dim. We find ways. We'll find drugs. We'll find alcohol. We'll find some men are fine, you know, or women are fine in, in, in being promiscuous or going through a bunch of women. We'll find it in all kinds of things that we could get addicted to and, and run away from, from the totality of what we really are and what we really came to do, which is to create heaven on earth. And you can see this in the physical reality really clear because like right now, as far as like religion is concerned, you know, in your church or your old church, it might be a little thinner than what it used to be because all of these things have to die out first, like religion and the health system and, and you know, the government shutting down and things like that. All of that has to die down first <laughs> before we all collectively evolve to have this heaven on earth experience. So what is a person, a person that this chosen person, this so-called 144, one of the 144,000, however you put it, the light worker, the chosen one, what are they to do when they feel like they don't want to be here? I want to help that particular person out today because that person used to be me. 
And I would say to you, if you look at things, all things as being energy, frequency, and vibration, we're going to use the elements. You know how like um, they'll teach you about the elements of earth, the water, the the wind and the fire all of that is energy and I'm, I'm speaking energetically i don't i don't speak ever about you know the the you know the jesus the buddha and all that i i talk about energy frequency and vibration because if we can go there we could all find a commonality and we won't begin to separate ourselves and say oh well the jehovah witness gonna go to heaven and then the hebrew israelites ain't going and and but i'm waiting on jesus and buddha under the tree and all of that it separates us from the real totality of what god is because it's, god is a divine frequency and so for this particular person, I would say use the elements, use what you have, the elements to remember energetically where you are. So we, we will use like the earth, for example, the earth represents the material or, or the physical. So in the physical, that person would have to learn how to be in the world, but not of it. You know how in the biblical text it says, occupy to, uh, until I come. Well, in that statement, it is occupy until I come. This I, this person, this, this, this tapped in ability where the subconscious is tapped into superconscious. Occupy yourself in the physical reality until you're tapped in and you know who you are. You understand that you've been here lifetime after lifetime after lifetime evolving till you get into the subconscious state of being. And when you get there, you'll begin to remember, oh, okay, that's what the deja vu was really all about. It was re me remembering all of my lifetimes that I have been here before, that I am the Christ conscious one coming back over and over until I evolve to this state of being. So you use the earth, the physical reality for that. And then there's the wind. The wind can be represented of your thoughts. So wind is like air, your thoughts. And you use your thoughts. So if you're not in this state of being totally with your thoughts, you begin to use your thoughts by renewing your mind, thought by thought by thought. Understanding that you are purposeful here in the physical reality. Understanding that your energy is so powerful that it has enough power to quicken other energy form beings and allow them to waken up to their higher self. This is why they're in, in the allegory text when Jesus had the lady with the issue of blood, just because his energy was on point, just because he was in his Christ consciousness mode, he had the ability just to be touched by the lady with the issue of blood and she was made whole. So your thoughts need to be renewed for you to understand. This is why you're here, God. This is why you're here. Then you use your fire, the fire element. The fire element is going to represent your ambition and your passion for life. There's something, all of those so-called chosen ones. Now, everybody is chosen. I'm not, I'm not discriminating here. Everybody is chosen. I'm just saying the ones that are ready, ready right now, chosen type. The ones that are at that frequency right now is who I'm speaking to. So back to the fire, the fire is going to represent the ambition or your passion. There's something inside of you that you are so passionate about that, that, that is your fire, your desire that milk yourself into doing that. Find out what that is. If you don't know for yourself, the people around, you know, <laughs> the people around you think that that thing is so amazing. And I'll share my thing that, that I know of, and that's me speaking. And believe it or not, everybody always asks me, you know, where you from? And Oh, I like how you talk or whatever. Believe it or not, there was a moment in my life when I was on mute where I spoke no words. I actually, because of that, on purpose, trying not to speak, I ended up e having thyroid issues in the physical reality because all things stem from the spiritual before they come forth into the physical reality. But I was so mute that I didn't want to talk because of my old issues that I had. And I just was muting my voice and didn't want to speak. I called myself not wanting to walk in my purpose because I always knew what my purpose was. But everybody outside of me, every time I opened up my mouth, they would always ask me, you know, you're a great speaker. You need to be speaking. What are you doing? You know, and I'll shut up because I felt like if I shut up, I wouldn't have to do <laughs> the speaking because I was really nervous about it. You know, I, I didn't know what to say. But when I just begin to open my mouth and the passion for, my, for me speaking, now it's like, I can't stop. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the driving force for me to help somebody no matter where I am. 
You know, even though I don't, I don't speak much in the physical reality, but when I do, I'm so passionate about it all the time. Find your passion and your passion is going to give you that energy. Your passion is going to give you that connection back to the divine frequency. You're going to constantly be recharged from the divine frequency. You're never going to run out when you're tuned into that. And so I said the earth, I said the wind, I said the fire and the water. The water is going to represent your emotion. That's, that's the four elements that I want to speak on to help that particular being. The water is going to help you with your emotions. And so not wanting to be here in the physical reality and being feeling depressed is really driven to your emotions. So you need to sit there and use that water. You need to sit there in them tears in that moment and find out why you don't want to come forward and present the gift that you came forth in the physical reality to present to us because we are all gods in physical form but we came forth bearing gifts gifts to everybody in our so-called kingdom our so-called virtual reality here so you use that emotion what you do is you sit still in that while you in that darkness talking about you don't want to participate in this physical reality you sit still in those tears and ask yourself why you don't want to you sit still in those tears and figure out what is there inside of you that's making you feel uncomfortable when you are God in human form. You are the savior that everybody in your physical reality has been looking and waiting for. And you ask yourself why to the point where you understand your why. And when you find out about your why, you rewrite your story. And you rewrite your story to the point where you know, no, I did not come forth here to be depressed. I came forth here in the physical reality to be a beacon of light. And when I begin to shine my light, I'm going to shine my light so bright that the world is going to see. And when I do find my light and shine it for others to see, then I'll realize that I'm not here alone, that there are other light workers in the physical reality. But I didn't see them because I was so low. I was so depressed. I was so separated from my source and I wanted to go into the darkness <laughs> instead. I didn't want to be tapped into my source. I didn't want to give the world in my simulated environment the gift that I came to bring. But, but when you turn that light on, you realize it's almost like being on the street at night in the darkness and in, in, in some of the street lights, two or three of the street lights went out. Well, if you don't shine your light, you, you know, it's dark on, by those houses right there. But when you shine your light, not a whole street lit up. There are others near you that you probably not even paying attention to because you don't want to be here in the physical reality. So that's how I would say that helped me in my journey to remember what I came for it to do and to understand and put the pieces together that, that that deja vu was me showing me all of the lifetimes when I said, no, I, I don't want to do that. No, I, 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 I pick somebody else. No, I don't, I don't feel like I belong. I'm just going to sit here and exist. <laughs> no, you have something greater to do here in the physical reality. And so just like um, they say, too much is given, much is required. <laughs> much is required, but, but your simulated environment, everyone in it is a projection of you, like is you pushed out. So everything that you need, they need. So whatever that issue is inside of you that you're depressed and sad about, once you uncover that, all of your reflections need that too. So if it was just that you felt like you didn't belong, guess what? Your reflections might feel that they don't belong either. So you let your reflections know that piece of you that you felt was missing and, 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 just, and just encourage them by saying something as simple as, I'm so happy that you finally stepped into your passion. Your reflections need to hear that from you because they have been that same issue as within, so without. I'm so proud of you using your voice to speak. I'm so proud of your journey. I'm so happy that I could witness you growing in your life. I don't care what it is, whatever you going through, your reflections are going through too because everyone is you pushed out. And so <laughs> I encourage you to shine your light Shine your light because this here darkness here is, is where we all stem from. But I promise you if, you, if you go back on that side and give up on this thing called life, when you get on the other side, you're going to want to come back on this side. 
Because that's all it is, is in and out. It's life and death. <laughs> it's conscious and, 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 and subconscious. It's polarities everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. And so once you get to this place where you're all large and in charge in the physical reality and you got this, this, this ego just, just running a show here, that's not the end for you. That's not what you came for, for in the physical form. You came forth in the, in, in, to be this, the Christ conscious one. And notice the ego right here is tamed now. Notice you're using your first eye all over you now. You don't need to use the two eyes no more because now you're tap, tapped into source. Now the union has begun. <laughs> now you've seen God face to face and you have lived. Now he restored my soul. Because your soul is your subconscious mind. Now you can understand that biblical text in the totality of God, in the totality of who you are. Now nothing shall by any means harm you. Now your frequency is in alignment. And you're not longing for to be in the darkness. You're not longing to give up on life no more. Because you understand to live is to die. That I never get this thing called life wrong. That I'm God in human form. That I go in and out of realms, in and out of dimensions. And I came forward to experience God. God wanted to experience itself. Not cry and run away from itself. Not be depressed. Not come in here and not shine in that light that God came forward to shine. I wanted to share that with somebody. And, um... And go over the uh, questions from anybody that have any from my previous videos. Whew. But I had to get that out because my heart really feels for those people who are, are just like me in my simulated environment here. The people that are drawn to me. And, and I remember those days and we all go through it. I'm not exempt. It can be lonely, a spiritual journey. It can feel depressing when you've separated yourself by being depressed. You separate yourself from your source. And so that's why it, it feels so sad. That's why you sometimes don't feel <laughs> like you're part of anything because you came to enjoy the, the physical reality too. So let me look at these um, comments on here and see if they have any questions. Oh, and before I forget, they had somebody last week. Their name started with a K. I'm not I'm not really good with this here TikTok thing here. And they, they tried to join. And I want to say to you, I'm so sorry. Because you tried to join and I hit decline. Because I thought I did something wrong. I saw a big box and I was like, oops. And I hit the decline. And then I realized, oh, that was somebody that was trying to join. So if you want to join, I'll let you, babe. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings if you're still here. <laughs> but um, that was a mistake. Let's see. Hello, hello, hello. Let me see. I feel like all the bad happening to me, I manifested. And I can't get any positive going through. I try. That's scoop. Yes, you did manifest, and even in that sentence right there, you still manifesting by the choice words. We our spoken words and our thoughts manifest for us. Those habitual thoughts and spoken words, we're that powerful. And you're saying, I I feel like I manifested all the bad happening, and I can't get I can't get any positive. Yeah, you can, and you can start with that sentence. I feel like I am a master manifester manifesting. And I feel so positive about the things that I am manifesting. You change it thought by thought. You change it word by word. You change it by the renewing of the mind. You change it by changing that old story. Whatever that happened that was bad, you close your eyes and imagine it turned out to be good. And that is working out for you. And that the end was different from what it was that took all bad. That's how you change it. And every time you think about it, you think about it in a good way instead of a bad way. And you keep on going and going and going with the new healthier thoughts, the new positive thoughts. It's only a thought thing. This is a mental game, thought by thought by thought. 
if you have a so-called shitty day today, you revise that day and make that day the most beautiful, abundant, happy day of your life. You call it forward. You ask yourself, God never asks himself a question that he or she don't know the answer to. You ask yourself, show me a beautiful day. And it'll send you a picture and you milk the feeling of that picture. And there you go, the feeling already. The feeling in your right now reality. From feeling like a bad day to a good day instantly will pop into your mind and you milk that feeling. You ask yourself, what does joy feel like? What does being a master manifester that manifests all the things that he's ever desired? What does that feel like? And you live in that. The human imagination is really, really powerful. And the thought, like I was telling somebody, a partner, I mean a couple, they were sitting down in a chair and they were, they were pushed away at this particular gathering. And they say, um, oh, don't come over here. Don't hug us. We sit. And somebody else that was at that gathering, they, he said, uh, nah, man, she gonna hug you anyway, man. She got herbs and all kinds of stuff at that house. She don't care about stuff like that. And I hugged them and I told them, I said, you know what? <laughs> y'all need to stop. I think this is my third time seeing y'all as a couple and, and that, that's what y'all speak. I'm sick. Y'all said that last time I saw y'all. And I don't go out that much is what I was telling them. And so they were like, what you mean? I was like, you're speaking sickness for tomorrow. That's why you're sick today because last time you spoke it, last time you thought it, to have a new word, you know, I'm feeling better than yesterday. Oh, I'm getting my strength back. Oh, things are looking good. Instead of I am sick, I am that I am. That is the most powerful thing. When you say I am whatever is coming after that, you are putting that into your subconscious mind. And so the blessings of God are yea and amen. I am sick. Yay. Amen. So shall it be. So we got to really be conscious creators instead of creating by default. And I hope that helped you, baby. Let's see. Um, hello, beautiful. Hey, brown skin. Repent. <sighs> Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Yeah, you know, that's beautiful. And, and, you know, everybody look at the biblical text in a different way. So when I hear about sins being blotted out, I think about the renewing of the mind, the old thoughts. that Because really, the true sin is when you're not in alignment with yourself, when you're not feeling good, when you're not feeling like the Christ conscious one, when you're not experiencing love from your source and joy and peace and bliss. That's the real sin. Because your 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 God your God avatar will give you a signal called emotions. Your internal GPS will let you know. Wait wait wait! I'm feeling something called fear here. I'm feeling anger here. I'm feeling dis ease. I'm feeling disharmony. It'll give you all of these feelings to let you know I am not feeling love, which is the totality of what I am. So therefore, when I think of sin, I think about those feelings that negative experience that I'm having. And so for your sins to be forgiven, you have to rewrite the story of those sins. You gotta let it not be robbery to be equal with God. You gotta revise. You gotta put yourself at a higher frequency so you'll be in alignment with that source. Just like I was telling Scoop in the last example. And so they have this verse also in the biblical text that says something about um, wash me that I should be, purge me with your hyssop, that I should be clean, wash me, that I should be whiter than snow. Really what they're talking about is the renewing of the mind. They were talking about the mind the whole time in the biblical text. This was a mental game. The Christ conscious one was always talking about, let this mind be in you. It's by the renewing of the mind. You see? So that sin that we speak of, is us being at this ease with ourselves. See, see, we can forgive everybody. You know, we'll forgive that cheating man in the physical reality. We'll forgive that no good girlfriend or boyfriend or whoever outside of us. That's easy for a lot of people to do. But they don't want to forgive themselves, the little girl inside of them that did maybe know better. The little girl inside of them that are probably still hurting. Forgive her, the little boy inside of you who did the best that he can. Forgive him. So he could be at ease. So you, we can be at peace with ourselves so we can feel good because that's the real sin. That's the thing that causes dis-ease and disharmony. It's the things that other people did or you did and didn't forgive yourself from you. 
<laughs> because acid builds up in the body that way too. You know, we talk about the food, the acidic foods and the alkaline food, but what about the acid that builds up inside of the body when you have hate in that heart? What about, what about the people that mm, they have breast issues or breast cancer, but that oftentimes those are the ones that didn't experience the nurturing from their mother. And it's right there, coincidentally, right there by the bosom, you know? What about those that are maybe, you know, in, in, in no judgment here, maybe experiencing same sex or whatever, but those oftentimes be the ones that was touched when they were a little girl, a little boy. Now they don't want to be around the, the opposite sex. They're going to go for the same sex now because they don't want to be touched by a man no more or touched by a woman no more. But that dis-ease and that disharmony be in, in, in that sacral chakra by the sexual energy. Because it always start in the spiritual realm before it manifests in the physical reality. Or those people in their later years, they'll probably be the ones that maybe have little ovarian issues, prostate issues, right, right, right down there. Because all of this here started in the spiritual, this anger from being molested or being abused, whatever. It started in the spiritual realm and they held on to that anger. And in the area that they held on, something manifested in the physical reality. Oh, that's the real sin if you ask me. <laughs> okay, let me see. Let the wicked fall into their own nest while I escape safely. That's beautiful, babe. Hey, queen. Thank you for being here, queen of ace. Thank you. I'm still in this. Oh, thank y'all for being here. So glad I caught you. You helping me. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, brown skin girl. <laughs> Hi, hi, uh, ball for life. I like that. I'm happy. Look at that picture. I like that. Thanks for the reminder. Clean water. Okay. Wow, amazing. Oh, I went a little. Oh, oh, the comments jumped. I'm sorry. So insightful. I definitely have thyroid issues and rarely speak or speak too much. Yeah. Yeah. And when you have those type of issues too, it's really, really draining physically. The symptoms of him feel so draining because at, for me, you know, it was because I wasn't speaking. This was a time, and I rewrote my story, so I'm not gonna indulge in my old story because when you rewrite it, you don't, you only remember the good, the new story. But I would say that I just kept quiet on purpose, you know, because I felt as a little girl that that was. Um, my way of being a big girl, you know, you know how they tell little boys, you know, little boys don't cry, you know, they tell little girls, you know, be a big girl. And so I just, in my mind, just thought I was doing something, but I wasn't speaking my truth. I wasn't speaking my truth. And so it showed itself in the physical reality as a dis-ease because I had sinned against myself. And so when I sinned against myself, that dis-ease and disharmony was thyroid issues. And so in the physical reality, they, you know, you know, I, I researched, you know, with the iodines, iodine supplement, and I, you know, did my herbs. And, and that's when I actually went on my journey of health and wellness and, you know, started detoxing my body in the physical reality. But let me tell you something, though. <laughs> Love heals all. What really, in hindsight, really healed me was when I reached out to the person that really had me holding my, my self-expression in. And I told this person, you know what? I love you. I love you simply because you are my father. And so the barbed wire and the K9 and everything that I had around my heart <laughs> was released after that. And so my heart chakra was cleared. And so now I have a better understanding. Even when you look at spirituality with the heart chakra, you want to unclog that chakra because it is so powerful that it has enough energy to clear all of your chakras. And your chakra pools of energy are correlated to the organs inside of your body. So if I would tell you anything, it would be to heal that heart. Because no medication in the world, even the iodine supplement, even if you increase your magnesium, if you carry something in your heart, you will always excuse you. Let's see, little girl who was hurt by those. 
the closest to myself I naturally love love though yeah the little girl was hurt but you know you need to talk to that little girl though you need to let that little girl know that it all is well and that she did the best she can and that she's loved and whatever it is that she didn't have you have to give her because you are her savior there's no savior outside of you and so the little girl still needs a savior save her talk to her have fun with her and it's just like talking to yourself and asking yourself are you okay putting your arms around yourself hugging on yourself when you go out you know to i don't know to the store or whatever I imagine that she's there with you and say oh my gosh what are we gonna buy today how are you feeling today when you cry when you get feel sad you you ask her you know what's wrong I love you. Are you okay? Are we okay? I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of the woman that you've grown into. You did the best you can and what you knew at that time. I see you. I love you. I'm going to protect you. I want you to go to sleep in my hand. Talk to yourself, whether you were a woman or a man. Talk to yourself. Have moments with yourself and make sure, you, sure yourself don't have any dis-ease and disharmony with you in yourself. Because that, like I say, is the real sin. When you sin against you. You are queen butterfly. You are my earth angel. Appreciate you so much. Oh, thank you, babe. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that. Let's see. It's a Sasha? Sus? It's a sus? I don't know how to say that. Let's see, right? I did that once a few weeks back. I just cried. <laughs> But crying is nothing but rinsing your um your heart off. And sometimes we need to do that with our heart. You know, just rinse it off. And, and it is okay. And then, so now it's back magnetically charged again. You know? And so it, it should be drawing things, your desires to you. It shouldn't be clogged up by what daddy did or what that man did or what your girlfriend did. It shouldn't be dirty with those things. It should be magnetically um attracting. Whatever it is that you're wanting. <laughs> oh it's ash okay 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 <laughs> thank you babe thank you for telling me that because i don't understand your um username let me see if i i missed some things up in here ash let's see purpose and resilience is here thank you for being here babe okay clarity oh you got clarity from that scoop that's perfect that's perfect I have thyroid issues and I've been working with my throat chakra. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't energetically do anything with, um, you know, the, um, crystals, whatever energetically, but that's a beautiful way to do it. Um, in hindsight, um, I, I didn't know this then cause this was years ago. I didn't know this then, but I would in hindsight now with this knowing that I have, I would speak the word too. I would speak that and i would say i am a great communicator i effectively communicate and speak my truth you know i am healed i am whole i am wellness i have a healthy mind mental clarity my heart chakra is open it draws people to me i am magnetic i am love i am lovable and so i'll be working with my heart and my throat at the same time because like i said it's so powerful there's a big field of energy around the heart chakra. And so it has enough power to unclog the chakra pools above or below it. So I will be speaking the word and I'll be having a thought. And then I'll go and I'll live in the end from this new knowing that I have now. I will live in the end where I am no longer, you know, if you're on medication, I don't know. I am no longer feeling drained, you know. I'm no longer taking medication. I'm no longer feeling dis-ease. I go to the end. So when going to the end, you have no resistance. You're not wanting to be healed from no thyroid issue. You are healed already from it. So you're in the end and you're looking back and you're like, oh, I remember. I remember when I had the thyroid issues. I feel so happy now that I don't. That that's the thing of the past. And I'm speaking my truth. I'm walking in my purpose. And I get to talk to all kinds of people and I don't feel like I'm short of breath anymore. I don't feel the fatigue. I don't have the weight gain or the weight loss anymore. Oh, this feels so cool. This feels so fun. I could work out. I have my strength and endurance. 
I'm happy. I feel so happy. I feel so thankful. I feel so excited because if I could do that, I could do anything. And you just keep on going and going with that thought, that new clarity of living in the end. Because the universe, like I said, or God or whatever you call it, looks at us as though we could get anything we want. The blessings of God are yea and amen. So if you're having the experience already, it's like the universe is like, give her more. Give her more healing. Give her more prosperity. But if you have the experience, like, oh my gosh, my thyroid is destroying me. Blah, blah, blah. The universe is saying, give her more. So you're going back to the doctor. Give her more. Oh, it's getting worse. Oh, give her more. Because we're getting, based upon what we're thinking and speaking, that's it. Okay, let me go back down here to the bottom. I need to know the work that needs to be done, so I do appreciate you. Yeah, I suffer from the need to feel needed. Feel needed from who, what, who, you, a needed... Tell me more about that, Ash. Tell me more about that. I need it. You want people to need you, maybe? All right, dealing with everyday chronicles. So I feel, wait, chronicles. I feel people energy and it, and it drains me. Okay. Yeah, well, and I'm speaking from experience i used to feel drained when i was experiencing the so-called thyroid issue moment when i was fighting it when i was not really over had not overcome it but not anymore i will refine i will redefine feeling drained now is just me wanting my me time to be still and know that i'm god because it's really when you get to a certain point in your journey you always can recharge from source source is going to always this being source at the top it's going to always refill you so that's really just you sitting alone and experiencing quiet time you being still this is why in the biblical text jesus would go and you know be on the mount you know and be about his father's business in that allegory text it was just the stillness you know and he would come down from the mouth and the disciples and everything you know everybody would be and went to sleep because he or that that particular character knew how to be still and know that i'm god so i would say to you when you feel in that moment of being feeling drained or whatever turn the tv off turn the radio off turn your thoughts off you know turn it off and be still, be still. Just just imagine the nothingness that you stem from. Imagine maybe the sky or something, some cloud, beautiful clouds or some mountains, whatever it is that you like within nature, like, you know, birds or whatever. And just be still with the thoughts. Just be observer. You wanna learn how to observe and not have all of those thoughts. Because oftentimes the thoughts sometimes will drain you too. Because your thoughts, you're getting so many all day, every day. And then you got the thoughts of the program on the TV. You got the thoughts of the radio, the thoughts of the children and people projecting. So when you're drained, if you do that, you could easily recharge. That's the easy thing to do. That's what I do. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I feel like because of my purpose in life, I attract broken souls. And yeah, you will, like I do, like I do consultations with people all the time. Um, and I, I wouldn't say broken, you know, just at a point in their journey where maybe they need, a inner, need some energy, you know, and so maybe needing you to be that beacon of light for them to, you know, light their fire and, and then they carry on. But yeah, yeah, you do if you have like, a healing type purpose um speaking or um reiki work or you know things like that yeah you do attract them because they need you and, and they're drawn to you and you know how people say on the tiktok that you know that uh, the um a logarithms al algorithms whatever run tiktok whatever really know there's a higher power here <laughs> that's really running the show so 
you know, they are drawn to you. And so they, they asked me, you know, why aren't your videos shareable? I'm like, well, I'm not here to be seen. I don't care about the extra likes from being able to share it to other people. This here power right here shared it to the right people. You know, they're going to see it. <laughs> they gonna be drawn to it because this really runs the show. You could think the TikTok running. No, 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 no. This, the divine frequency is running the TikTok and every other show they got here in this simulated environment here. <laughs> so, let's see. I'm still learning to balance. Ooh, them comments went way. Hey, my Dion. Thank you for being here, babe. I see. Let me see. Oh, listen, look at here. Hi, Kilo Mac. If I miss y'all question, I'm sorry. These comments are going fast. Let's see, I'm back at the bottom now. Um, what if you're trying to speak positive, positivity into someone's life, but they still talk kind of down? Who wins? <laughs> okay. There's no... I know that was a joke point, but it's like no win lose thing. We're only learning um and and winning. We always go win. But if you're trying to speak positivity in someone else's life, but they still talk kind of down. Everyone is you pushed out. So you become the positivity. And then everybody outside of you is going to be a reflection of you. I'm talking about the people that are in your immediate circle now. Now, you know, the other little um, people in your little simulated environment, you know, the little, um, what do they call them on the TV? The little stunts, the little dummies, you know, the little extras, you know. They're going to have a little... They're going to have the other side, you know, because there's laws of polarity. You know, they you're going to have a hot and your cold. You're going to have your good and your evil, so to speak. But the ones that are in your simulated environment that you see, if you're talking about one of them, like that live in your home, that related to you, that you frequent, so to speak, those people only need you to remain positive. And then they're going to be like you because you or everyone in your environment push out. And so your frequency being heightened to positivity, they know that not, they're not even going to come around you. Matter of fact, they're going to be exited out of your life, some of them, if, they can't, if they're not vibing on your frequency. Yeah, like, this is why you lose friends and stuff in the journey too. You know, like, this is, it's, it's almost like you going to the grocery store and you going down the aisles and you see in, in, inside of this store is some, a relative of yours. And you made groceries in the, both of y'all was in the store for the same time for hours. But every time you went down the other aisle, they were going down the next aisle. And you didn't see them. That's how the energy going to work for you in, in those type of people. You're going to miss them. You, you know, they'll, they'll be like, man, last week I went to the store. I was in the store at the same time and I didn't see you. Like, man, you won. I was there. And then the phone going to ring because click over and something going to happen. You just... They just gonna be in there maybe for a second or whatever because you can't you're not vibing with them no more. Like why well, I keep missing them? That's, that's how I go. So you you be the positive. You just be it. <laughs> and your belief about them too. One last thing I want to add to that. Don't be the positive now and lower your frequency and be like watch this watch this here you go about to come over here negative. No your belief of others matters too now. Now you gonna be the positive. Remain being the positive and be so positive that you see others through the eyes of God. He's like, oh, I'm positive. I'm in my zone. I'm, I'm in my Christ consciousness state. So now I look at this person as, as him being in his or her conscious state. Oh, look, look, I can see why you're talking to him. I can see his thoughts changing. Oh, okay. Let's look at him. He's saying something positive. This is a real positive person. This person is transforming in front of my eyes. And you, your belief of them, go and transform them. It's you. So you looking at you, you dealing with you, so you save you. <laughs> That's how you do that there. Let me see. Oh, I'm coming. Hi, Inspired by KC. Thank you for being here, babe. Hey, Browns. Oh, Brown Skin sending me likes. That's what that is down there. Okay. 
all together. Thank you for following me. Let's see. Have you ever experienced, have you ever experimented with lucid dreaming and shifting realities? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And <laughs> as a little girl, actually, I started and I didn't know what was going on. And um, at that time, I didn't know. You know, I grew up in church, so it was like, um, for me, for me, that was kind of scary because, you know, my mother's a minister. I don't know. I don't see my mama tonight. She must have forgot. She normally be on you. Well, she's a minister. My aunt is a, a pastor. You know, my uncle's pastor, the brothers, who's the drummer. I was in the choir and the treasurer and the camera girl. And I was all kind of things in, in churches, pastor's assistant and all of this. And so experiencing my name being called me um you know levitating out up in bed and and going in other dimensions was kind of scary because as a little girl <laughs> i would tell the adults or whatever what was happening first i thought it was a boogeyman so i would tell the adults what was happening and they called it the devil like right and so then I kind of like freaked out. This is kind of part of why I wanted to sit quiet too. I kind of began to freak out in my journey because I didn't, I didn't understand why the devil was trying to come and get me. <laughs> you know, I was like, I'm trying to be a good girl and the devil was calling me and, and then I can't sleep at night and then sleep um, paralysis. And yeah, I experienced it and I didn't understand it. But now I, I I deal with it and understand it on a spiritual level. And I actually had to heal, not heal, but deal with the fear that I had that religion gave me. From meditating to lucid dreaming to having spiritual experiences to um, being little G kind of God, I had to deal with all of that. Even when I meditated, you know, in the beginning of meditation for me, it was scary for me. It felt really scary because, you know, they in religion, I was always told that, you know, you don't want to go up in here. You don't want to go into no, none of this because this is where all the demons are. And so I had to better understand that as within, so without. So if I had any type of energies or demons or fear in there, that it was going to come out and it came out in my spiritual journey. But yeah, I've experienced that. And actually, um, so much so that I know now I better have a, under, I have a better understanding of what my purpose is here in the physical reality. I've, you know, experienced different lifetimes and different realms. And it helps me energetically be able to share with you what I've experienced too, because doing those spiritual experiences you begin to see that time that none of this is real for one and that time itself is illusion and that we are experiencing ourselves in multiple realities at one time because i experienced myself as dying being a baby you know being adult you know in seconds in these realms i <laughs> at my lower self energetically all the way expanding out and then coming back in the physical reality so freaked out till i'm like am, you know asking my family do i look normal is everything okay am i okay do i look normal and because i was still kind of like speeded up so to speak so yeah it can be overwhelming but yeah i i have i have let me see oh the comments jumped again let me see What would you say to someone that wants to life coach? Hmm. This is the third time somebody asked me about that there. Um, I think that's a beautiful thing to be able to, um, I'm, I'm assuming you mean to be somebody else mentor. Yeah. I, I think if it's your passion, go for whatever makes you feel good. Do that. Well, if it makes you feel good, do that. But don't, 
if it's your passion, your passion is not going to decrease your frequency though. That's the only thing about it. You know, they have some people in the physical reality really, really passionate about fighting against some things that, um, that keep them at a stumbling block or a standstill in their journey, you know, like drunk mothers against drunk drivers or whatever, you know? And so then, then, then they'll do it because maybe their child got hit by a drunk driver but this here so-called passion of theirs, have them crying over that child every day, have them seeing all of the little dead children in the neighborhood. And I would say to that particular person, maybe, just maybe your, your son wouldn't want you to do this. Maybe, just maybe, you're not happy doing this here. So if it makes you happy, you know, and it fuels your fire and you could recharge on it and you could do it and, and don't mind doing it, even if you're not getting paid for doing it, oh, go for it, go for it. I think that's a beautiful thing. Let's see. Um, I love that. I was hoping you'd give me those outward convos for outward convos for them changing. Write it down. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wrote it down. I see what you're saying. Okay, good. I'm glad I was able to help you with that, babe. Oh, look at I'm God is loving life. Hey, babe. Hey, CC. I'm late. How was your day? Beautiful. My day was perfect. Yes, say, let's see. Yes, everything was a devil in religion. Yeah, definitely it was. Hey, just pop in, gotta go to bed. Love you. <laughs> hey, baby, thank you for joining. Oh my God, I just got that exact tapestry in. Wow. Oh, you like that? You got one? Beautiful. Beautiful. Everyone is you pushed out, babe. Let's see. Thanks for sharing your experiences and wise words. Lordy, shorty. I like that name. Okay. In my past, I've never had issues detaching from men. In my relationship oh you, you you're the person that said something about feeling needed let me see in my past I've never had issues detaching from men in relationship this time I'm struggling struggling <sighs> let me see what time it is it's 901 okay this is gonna be the last question here hey three RB Gotti I don't know. Some of y'all names are really different. I hope I'm saying it right. Okay, so in the past, you never had any issues but um, with men, but this time I'm struggling. What I would say to you is this here. Oftentimes, I don't, I don't even need to know the details of the experience it, evidently it it must have been something you enjoyed about this particular person this particular experience for you to even be writing that and you're talking about detachment but here's the thing energetically <laughs> i want you to know that you when you release the energy and you put yourself back in alignment, that's when you're more magnetic. See, it's really at that little soft spot of wanting nothing or noting that you get everything. And then you get an abundance of it energetically. And I'll use this physical example. I'm real short in the physical reality. And this is, this is something that I learned at a young age about men. I'm real short. I'm only 5'2". And so when I was younger, they used to call me shortstop. And so I was around eight to maybe 11 and, um, you know, the little boys, I was a homeboy and the little boys, okay, give me a minute, babe. And the little boys, give me a minute, um, Isabella, give me, a, let me do this first. And the little boys, they would, um, they would call, come to my house. They would come to my house for me, being that I was a little tomboy with them. They would come to my house and they would always wanted me to go and play with them. And I was running to the corner, you know, run, you know, see who could run fastest to the corner. Duck, duck, goose, you know, everything that they wanted to play had to do with running. And so I'm short and I always had short legs and I used to get tired of running because I never would actually beat them. And so one day we were running. And I was try I had to try to catch them. And they were way down the darn street. And I just stopped running. I stopped running. I turned around and I went home. Because I was tired. And I learned something that day, though. I went all the way to the front door. 
And he they come running back down the street and they're like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I was like, I'm about to go inside. And I was like, why? Why? What, what, what do you want to do? I was like, I don't, I don't want to run behind you. I don't want to play that game no more. What you want to play? What you want to play? And I was like, I want to play hopscotch. You know, something that I ain't have to run down the street for with my short legs. But what I learned that day that really I think about all the time as an adult is that when, when you stop running, <laughs> when you put the attention back, when you use yourself and put yourself on the pedestal, that's when the dynamics of the game change. That's when people say, well, what do you want? That's when people begin to say, okay, well, what do you want to do? That's when people respect you. That's when all of the blessings come. Is when you stop running, stop needing, and put yourself back up there. And so it's no different in, sp in your spiritual journey. Anytime you're feeling a need for something outside of you, <laughs> you're not up there. You're not on the pedestal of your life. Because everything we've been taught in the physical reality that, oh, I need a job. I need to go to the doctor for this here. I need to go to this here place for vacation to experience this type of thrill right here. I need the... No, no, no. You came forth in the physical reality with all the things that you needed. Even your your crystals fluid for when you came forth to be the Christ conscious one. It was always inside of your head as a soft spot when you was a baby. So you had everything you needed already. You had the love from source already because you already that love. And so since everybody is you pushed out, the love that you feel from men or women is really your love. You're really just experiencing your love. So by getting yourself or putting yourself in alignment and detaching from the physical and putting yourself in alignment, now you're in a better position to draw them back, that man back to you. If you ignore that physical reality for a moment and just put all of that energy into yourself, it is my promise to you that you could get that person, you could get many, many men coming behind you when you do that. And this is fact. Energetically, it is facts. It is called the law of attraction. You throw in the law of assumption while you while you doing this here, and you, and you got them. You assuming in your mind because your thoughts create things. You assuming in your mind, he's not going anywhere. Well, I take care of me. He's not going anywhere because he loves me uncontrollably. My heart is magnetically drawing him. But I got to put me on my pedestal. I got to go in for this appointed time to deal with this issue of need. And so you put yourself on that pedestal and you begin to say that I am lovable. I have everything that I need. I am chosen. I am a gift of God. I am a gift from God. And you deal with the, the little girl inside of you. Maybe the little girl inside of you, she still feels that way too. So you hug on her, you love on her, and you let her know that she has you now. You let her know that she's protected because it could be her. But you deal with your issues and you get yourself in alignment and you realize that you need no tame. You realize that this is a re, um, an illusion anyway. Just like they say in the biblical text, in Ecclesiastes, all of this is meaningless. There's, there's no marriage in the kingdom. The only, the only union is when your subconscious is meeting the, the superconscious. That's when the real union begins. But until then, I, I get it. You want to occupy until you're becoming state. But just to let you know, you need no thing. You have everything that you need everything and i'm not trying to say we don't need a man type energy there i'm saying spiritually you have everything you need because that love when you fill your cup up with that love you can be anywhere you can feel any experience you could take yourself on any type of high you don't even need to smoke no weed you don't even need to do no, no beer or whatever they do because you already have that too you already have the dimethyltryptamine already inside of you you don't need to wear no jewelry. You already have gold inside of you. <laughs> you don't need to pick up the phone. You already have telepathic communication inside of you. <laughs> You're everything. 
So to need let you know that you're not in alignment with self because you need something outside of self. When you're everything, you're the gift and the giver at the same time. You're the gift, and but, but you should be giving your reflections a piece of you and your wholeness. Because that's what your reflections want, to experience your wholeness. You really can't give them nothing anyway when you're not whole. There's nothing to give. Your, when your car is on E, there's nowhere for you to go because it's not about to start. But when you find the wholeness of who you are and realize you need no team, everybody gonna come. Okay, well, that's my time. That's my hour. This video was from my heart to yours, babe. Y'all be blessed and enjoy this human experience. Goodbye, babe.